Good evening. Tonight, we will be looking at Psalm 91. Before we begin, I ask that you bow your heads with me as we begin with prayer. Gracious Father, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for this time and ask your hand upon our study and bless those who are engaged with it today. In Christ's name, amen. I've chosen Psalm 91 because of verse 11. Verse 11 reads, For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. We are told in Scripture that angels are ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. Angels are agents of heaven that do the Lord's bidding. I don't fully understand the nature of angels, but I do believe that we live in a world that is awash in a reality that we cannot see with our eyes. A supernatural reality of God's divine presence at work among us. God is here. God is present. In our day today, people have been trained to ignore God, to pretend that God does not exist, to close our eyes to the transcendent reality of the divine. Yet we live in a world where every day is a miracle. Every day is filled with blessings. Every day bodies heal and water is turned into wine. Maybe not as fast as Jesus turned it into wine, but it is turned into wine over the course of a season. The heavens declare his majesty. Each event of the day is filled with meaning. The, we, there are moments of protection. God is everywhere. But people are blind and do not see. God has become framed out of how people view this world. Well, this morning I had the honor of standing at a grave of a man whose late in life calling was to remind people of the transcendent presence of God. His name is Jimmy Robinson. You may know him as Teddy Bear or Wire Man. He passed away last week at the age of 94. He was a part of a generation that is now known as the greatest generation. Jimmy fought in World War II, he raised a family, and he preached the gospel. Not so much a preacher of words, but more of a preacher of twisted wire. He told nearly, nearly every Bible story in the Bible with his wire and gave testimony as to how God helped him with what he made and the materials that God provided. Most often, though, he preached that God is present through the gift of an angel that he would give and that God loves you spilled out in wire. I have some with me in my office examples of his work, things that he has given to me. Here are just a few of his examples. He made this for me. This is, this is me preaching in the pulpit on a Sunday morning. Here's another example of, of, of people coming to church. And you see the angel and you see the church there at the end. I love that. And also he did a number of larger displays. Here's another example. This is um, Jesus' life in, in, in just in images. Jesus came, he lived, he died, he rose again, he ascended, he sent the Spirit, and he's coming again. Here's another great example of something that he would often do. He, he made um, John 3.16 in three different languages. English, then you see there Greek, you see Swahili, and then you see um, Bengali. Um, what a great display, what a great act of love that Jimmy has done. But what he's probably most known for is the angel. Here is an image of the angel that he has made, one of thousands that he has made and given out to people. I remember a story that his son shared with me once, Jimmy Jr., who has passed away. Jimmy Jr. was a pastor, and his father, Jimmy, would visit him at church. And one Sunday, Jimmy sat twisting wire, which he always did. And Jimmy, the pastor, the son, kind of was embarrassed. Dad, what are you doing? 
And during the time, the service, when the preacher asked everybody to stand up and shake the hand around you, Jimmy Robinson, the father, stood up and handed an angel with God loves you written on it to the woman standing behind him. The woman broke down in tears and, and exclaimed, I prayed that God would give me a sign that he loves me. Well, she literally got a sign in church that day that she is loved by God. God used Jimmy to give her that sign. And I have seen that same story lived out hundreds of times in restaurants, in churches, whenever I was with Jimmy. He would wire and twist and make an angel and God loves you and gives it to someone, an older man, a young girl, a waitress at the table, a, a person he just knows needed to hear of God's love. And they would they would exclaim, I needed that. I needed to hear that. I needed to receive that. Jimmy was always telling people through his twisted wire that God is present and that God loves you. Psalm 91, our psalm tonight, is about God's love and is about you finding protection in the shadow of that love. Listen to Psalm 91 as I read it from verses 1 through its end, verse 16. It reads, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find sh refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, or the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall by your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked, because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High who is my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague shall come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you, to guard you in all your ways. On, your, on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder and the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him and I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is God's word. Verse 1 summarizes what this whole psalm is about. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I love that image of abiding in the shadow of the Most High, the Almighty. It brings to mind those times that I have sought shelter from a hot sun or from a storm by getting under a big tree or the overhang of a roof. The storm would beat against the tree or the roof while I, in its shadow, stayed protected. This is what the psalm is saying. Get into God's shadow. Hide yourself in Him because our world's not safe. The psalmist describes some of the dangers of the world. People are seeking your harm, seen in the image of the snare of the fowler. There is disease and deadly pestilence, and we can sure picture that today as we struggle with this COVID-19. Terror at night and the arrow that flies by day describe the things that happen unexpectedly without warning. This is why the psalmist says to you, find your refuge and fortress in God. Trust in Him. Get into his shadow. The psalmist has, or this Psalm 91, has the dubious distinction of having the only verse in all of Scripture that is quoted by Satan. Satan the devil quotes Psalm 91 when he is tempting Jesus in the wilderness. In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 4, we read that after 40 days, when Jesus was at his weakest, the tempter came and first tempted Jesus by asking him to prove himself by turning rocks into bread. Jesus doesn't and responds to the devil by quoting scripture. Jesus says in Matthew 4 verse 4, It is written, 
Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Well, the devil must have thought, I can quote scripture too. So he quotes Psalm 91. We read in Matthew verse chapter 4, verse 5, The devil took him to the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, and here's a quote of 91 verse 11, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, and now... And, and, and he will command his angels concerning you. And their hands, they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. The devil quotes Psalm 91, verses 11 and 12. Why is this the verse that de the devil has memorized and committed to memory? I think it is because of what the next verse says. Verse 13 is actually about the devil. And it reads, you will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underneath. The devil is known as a roaring lion that devours and as the serpent of old. Verse 13 tells us that the son of man will crush the head of the serpent. I think the devil knows this psalm because it speaks of his destruction. I wonder if the devil thought he had won and bested Jesus when Jesus was on the cross. I can imagine the devil thinking or saying, See, you're not the Son of God. After all, you proved it. The Bible says that God will command his angels concerning you, lest you stub your toe. Well, look at you. You're bruised and beaten and soon to be dead. You'll not be the one to defeat me. What the devil did not know or understand was that Jesus' death on the cross was not according to what he deserved, but what we deserved. God has said through all of Scripture that sin will be punished, and it was upon the cross. Jesus received what we deserved. And even more astounding, Jesus gives to you and me what he deserved. Verse 11, I believe, is about the Messiah. But because of what the Messiah has done for us, it's now about us. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. What Jesus deserves has been given to you and me. And this is what it means when scripture, ta scripture talks about Jesus being our righteousness, which means that what he deserves, what he has earned is ours. Jesus has stood in the storm that was meant for you and me, and he cast a shadow for us to hide under. What does Jesus deserve? What has the Son of Man earned? Well, we read in verse 14, Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him. Because he knows my name, when he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. These are God's promises to you. Not because of you, but because of Christ. He has earned them, and now he's given them to you. Because of Jesus, the Lord holds you and delivers you and protects you. The Lord is with you in times of trouble. The Lord answers you and, 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 and honors you and satisfies you. And the Lord shows you his salvation, which is a salvation to eternal life. Today, for me, it was a sad day because I miss my friend, Jimmy Robinson. But today, for me, is also a happy day, a day of celebration because Jimmy Robinson has survived death. He has escaped because he found refuge in the shadow of the cross and walks today in the presence of God. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we give you thanks that Today we can celebrate your deliverance given to us through the cross. I pray for those who are hearing tonight and hear this message that you will work in their hearts, that you will um, lead them into your shadow, protected from the storms of this world, and deliver them into your salvation. 
I thank you, Father, for this evening. In Christ's name, amen.